Listen, please like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel. You don't want to miss it, so tune in every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook. Let's talk. Let's talk. Listen, please like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel. I have been asked by several people, hey, Lammy Pooh, to give my testimony. So that's what's going to happen tonight. If you saw over the weekend, I had another guest scheduled for tonight um, but she called me Sunday and had to cancel because of an emergency so instead of switching out one of my other guests I decided to be obedient and that I will be sitting in the guest seat tonight so uh, my interviewer is here so you guys tag some friends, share the video, tell them to come on in the room. We're going to get started. And I'm going to sit in the hot seat. Y'all, can I, can I say this? I, um, I don't know why I'm a little bit nervous about being a guest on my own platform, but I am. Um, but I'm going to be obedient. Says the Lord. I don't know what my interviewer is going to ask ask me. Hey, love. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm a little bit jealous because you're out in Vegas. <laughs> Literally just got in the room. Literally just got in here. Can you see me okay? I can, it's a little blurry, but I know who you are. Okay. Not my guest, I'll be able to tell who you are, but I can tell you. C can you pull the shade down over here just a little bit? Yeah, look like you look like you just in this really nice, um, you know. Okay, everybody, this is my interviewer. She's going to interview me, um, Janine. Uh, um, she is. Good. Right now at Las Vegas. She just got Las Vegas probably within an hour. Not even an hour, maybe like 30 minutes. So uh, she is one of those people who's been talking that I need to my so, I don't know what she's going to um, Normally, y'all know I my guests and I let them tell their journey. Um, you can wait. Whatever God tell. But tonight I'm going to give Janine free will. And I want and she's gonna follow whatever God leads her to do tonight. And I'm gonna let her interview me. So here is my interview. Janine. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? It is about 7.18. Y'all time is 4.18 where I am right here. But when she asked me to do it, I had been kind of harassing her, you know, for the last several months, just not a couple, not a few, but we're going to go beyond a few and say several months, telling her that she needed to sit down and be interviewed concerning her testimony is she's always that listening ear she's always that you know person that wants to draw out your testimony and and have you speak have them speak words of encouragement but it's time for her to tell her testimony so rebecca how are you i am wonderful dear how are you I am absolutely positively well. So before we get started with with the domestic violence part of your life, give me a little bit of background about who you who you were then, because I'm quite sure 
once that period of your life was happening, you transitioned into someone else. Um, so tell me who you were before this particular situation. Before the domestic violence? Before the domestic violence. Okay, before the domestic violence, uh, those of you who don't know me, if you're from Sumter, you know who I am, you know my family, you know where I come from. I was raised in a very, very Christian home, um, a two-parent home, mom and dad in the house. Um, there were seven of us. I, we literally never even saw our parents have an argument prior to this. I had never seen domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the left. I was, like I said, we were raised in the church all of our life. Um, we all sang on the choirs. We all were quartet singers at, at one point in time. Um, so I came from a very, very spiritual background. Um, no violence, no argument other than among the children um you know we would have our sibling arguments but as far as seeing violence and um uh, i never saw that um my my dad uh, if he and my mom argued we never witnessed it we never saw it um if it ever happened and now that I'm older and I think about it, I'm all positive they had this they just sheltered us from it. So I didn't know domestic violence. I didn't know chaos and turmoil in the home as far as relationships. Um, that's where I come from. That's my background prior to the domestic violence journey. Okay, so fast forward a little bit to this particular relationship. I know we talked a little bit about it, but um, before we um, deep dive into that, let me ask you this particular question. What was your personal perspective on male abusers like for me you know it's always i will never be in that particular situation so what was your perspective on domestic violence be before you became a victim of domestic violence i didn't have one because i didn't even know what domestic violence was you know what i mean i didn't know <laughs> i had no clue i didn't know anybody who, not even my friends that I grew up with, mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody that was in a domestic violence home other than my ex-husband. Mm. And even when he and I got together, I still did not know that this thing had a name. Mm. And you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. know that it was domestic violence. Mm. I didn't know that until years after that what I had been through Wow. So let's let's talk about this particular relationship. And I'm sorry, y'all. Um, the the something is beeping in the room, so they're they're in here fixing it. So if you hear voices, that's what that is. Um, but so let's let's start about this. Let's talk about this relationship. How did okay. the relationship start? I met this guy my freshman year in high school. And he and I dated for, I'm thinking 
thinking about 10 months is that long maybe about seven months or so when i was a freshman in school and the reason that i actually broke things off with him in the ninth grade was that i saw something in him that terrified me a little bit that that should that, that kind of like told me that there was something off and what i knew of his home environment um there was a lot of chaos in his home environment so i broke the relationship off my senior year in high school and i went off to college in 82 and came home in the middle of the of the school year uh, my mom was like you need to come back home and um enroll in Mars College or um, tech or something. And I'm like, Ugh. and out of nowhere, after being home, probably not even a week, I get a phone call and it's him. And we talked a little bit that night and for a couple of days thereafter. And he was in a national Guard, I'm in National Guard, and his the, his conversation was that he was going going to Texas, stationed at Fort Hood, because he was going regular duty in the Army. And you should come with me. Well, I'm not going with you if we're not married. Now, at this time, I'm 19 years old, one year out of high school. This was in, if I'm not mistaken, March of 83. After a very, very short uh, courtship, we were married July, I think it's the 7th of 83. Mm. The very day after the wedding, <clears throat> all hell broke loose. Wow. We had to live because he was supposed to be leaving the day after the wedding, going to Texas. And I was going to be coming after him, after he got everything set up, you know, got an apartment. I was going to be coming on. Well, found out the day after the wedding, when it was time for him supposed to be leaving, that it all was a lie. He was not going to active duty he was not going to texas oh wow so here we are wow married not even 24 hours i had no job we had no place to live he was only in national guard oh. and his mother and stepfather uh just raised all kind of holy hell um, you're not staying here. You're not, you know, I mean, it was that, that day after the wedding, it was so chaotic to, it's like, it, it was almost like a dream. Wow. Oh, my mom. And, you know, she looked at me. Let me back up a little bit. My okay. mom and dad begged me, literally pleaded with me not to marry this guy. My dad went as far as to bargain with me. If you would go back to school, if you want to go back to Columbia, or if you want to go to Morris College, or if you want to go to Tech, whatever, just go back to school, finish your degree. I will buy you a car, whatever car you want, if you don't marry this boy. Mm. Well, Daddy, I'm, I'm, I'm 19 years old now, so I'm grown. And so I'm going to get married. I'm going to marry him and I'm getting out of something. My big thing was I got to get out of something. So my mother gave me the wedding that I wanted, that I always dreamed of, even though she didn't want me to marry this boy. Mm. And I married him. And this is the crazy thing. Well, not crazy. Now that now I know it was God showing me something. Two weeks prior to the wedding, he 
he came to my parents' house and a, a, a friend, a male friend of the family, he was a friend of all of ours. And my sister Mary Jane was there, my mom and dad, I forgot who else was in the house. And the guy came there, I'm not gonna call his name. And he came to visit us, like you always do. Mm -hmm. And my ex up at the house and he sees this guy there sitting on the, I think we were on the porch talking and he got violent. That was the first time I had seen it. Mm. And at that moment, I was like, I don't want to marry this boy. But my mom has spent so much money mm -hmm. on that. At that time, we're talking about 1983. Mm -hmm. My wedding dress was almost $900 alone. You know wow. how much money that day? That's not counting everything else. My mom was Goodman's florist. So she went all out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever I said I wanted for that wedding, she did it. So she had spent a lot of money, and I was scared that if I tell my mom I don't want to marry this boy, she's going to kill me because she didn't spend all this money. And for two weeks leading up to the wedding, I was in turmoil inside because I'm like, I don't want to marry this boy. There's something. I, I saw that violence at my mom's house on that porch that night. And I that, that, that terrified me. Mm. But I went through with the wedding in spite of the day after the wedding, all hell broke loose. Hmm. No place to live, no job. He's not going to Texas. All that a lie. So fast forward a little bit. Uh, my mom was like, we can get this thing annulled. And you come home. And go back to school. And I'm like, mommy, no, I, I, I'm married. I got to, I got to see, I got to, I got to hang in there. So I did. And probably about a month and a half, maybe two months into the, to the, to the marriage, his mother started saying very um, hurtful things about um, she's so black. Um, she wanted, she wanted to dominate, dictate him and she, and she did, and she did. And then with him, the, 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 the physical didn't start right away. It was all verbal. If I had, if he and I were talking and I, if I say I, the first time I heard him say, you think too much of yourself, mm. you all talking about I. You ain't all that. And I was like, okay. And that became like a pattern that the downgrading started. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm at his mother's house, everything was cool. Everything was cool. But if I'm not, you know, then, then there's all this argument. And that went on for probably about not even a year. Now I'm pregnant with my first daughter. Now I'm pregnant. My mom has gone out. She's taken me out. We bought a trailer, a mobile home for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. um, she takes me out because we don't have any place to stay. So she takes me. She bought, she, she puts her name on the dotted line with mine and buy, buy me a mobile home. And we moves into the mobile home. And um, I have my first daughter. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit deep. I'm going to get a little bit transparent right here. And I, I posted about this before, but I got to tell this. Mm -hmm. While I was pregnant with my first daughter, I had a feeling he was cheating mm. because the verbal abuse, abuse just got more and more violent. Mm. So a 
a feeling that he was cheating, but didn't know for sure. I was a little over eight months pregnant with my first daughter. And you know, by that time you're doing your weekly doctor visits. Mm -hmm. I had a doctor visit that week and he said he wasn't going and he wasn't going to take me. So I called my mom and she was like, Robert, you need to take this girl to her doctor's appointment tomorrow. So of course my dad comes and takes me to my doctor's appointment. And I'm in the back. And after the doctor examines me, you know, do the normal mm -hmm. prenatal thing. He comes back in the room and he says, Miss Jones, I, um, everything looks pretty good, but um, it seems as though um, you have um, trichomonia. Now I'm sitting there looking like, what? And I'm thinking it's a prenatal thing. I don't know what trichomonia is. Mm. And I was like, okay, what is that? And he said, that's an STD. Wow. I said, a what? He said, your husband has given you an STD. Wow. I, now I'm, I'm sitting there terrified. I'm dumbfounded. I'm 19 years old, married, pregnant, fresh out of my parents. I haven't really even learned how to cook yet. And I'm like, what in the world? And he says to me, because you are so far gone in your pregnancy, and you're due to deliver any day now. I'm going to have to send you to the DHEC and you're going to have to get penicillin shot and you have to get it in both hips. Wow. If not, and you deliver and your system is not, you okay. haven't had the shot, baby could be born with health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm still terrified. So I go out. Now I got to tell my dad. Wow. Oh. That guy take me to see him. <laughs> and what mm. the doctor said. And my dad in the car. And my dad is furious. Now I'm realizing how serious this thing is. Mm -hmm. And I cried. All, I cried all the way to see when I got to DHEC and they called me in the back to give me the shots, now I'm embarrassed because these people know that I have to have penicillin shot in both hips at almost nine months pregnant because of an STD. So of course, when I go home and I tell him what the doctor said and I had to go and get shots. He wanted to turn it all. It's you. I didn't give you nothing. And he denied it for several days until finally, I guess he didn't care one way or the other. He finally did. But, well, you got the shot, didn't you? Okay. And the, the violence still hadn't started yet. The, 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 the physical. Mm -hmm. Still hadn't started yet. The physical started when I what? got through. My let me let me interrupt you and ask you this quick question before we go to the physical. Your emotional state of mind. How was that with the with the emotional and verbal abuse? Like, I I know that you I, know. So, um, Go ahead. I was stunned. Mm -hmm. I was, my, I, I got to be honest, my self-confidence had shot to hell. Mm. My self-confidence was uh, gone. Wow. It, it, because I heard it every day. Mm -hmm. And not only did I hear it from him, 
when his mother was around or I'm at his mother's house, I heard it from her. And growing up in the South, being a very dark-skinned woman, girl, it wasn't a popular thing anyway. But now I got it. I'm hearing it in my home. Mm. This man that I sleep with every night. So my self-confidence was beat down. Yeah. I was no longer that, that Rebecca in high school, that outgoing, um, athletic girl that all the boys used to, I was the, I was the home girl that all the guys, you know, were my best friends and they tell me all their business. I wasn't that girl. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, my my self-confidence. It was that. So, and after, after here, I mean, it was a constant thing. It wasn't, a, you know, you know, even when the sex continued, but even after the sex was over with, you still got the verbal abuse, mm. you know, and, and, and three months later, I'm, I'm pregnant with my second daughter, but in between the two is when the violence, when the physical violence started. The very first time he actually hit me, my oldest daughter probably was about two, maybe three months old. It was, I might be pregnant with my second daughter and just didn't know it. That was the, that was the, the very first time was in my kitchen in my kitchen, standing at the sink, we had had an argument about something to this day. I can't remember what the argument was about. And it got real, real heated. And he went to walk towards the door. I put something down in the sink and went to open the refrigerator. And the next thing I know, he came rushing up to me and he clotheslined me. And I fell straight to the back. And I was stunned for about three minutes or so, and I couldn't even get off the floor. And while I'm on the floor, he's standing over me, be this, F that, you F this, you, and then when I finally got the strength to get off the floor. I'm, I'm stumbling to the door. Why? I don't know. And I go outside into the street. And he's cursing me out the whole time. And he gets in the car. And he... That was the first hit. Wow. And the second one did not happen until my second daughter was born. No, 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 no. I was pregnant with her when for, for that whole pregnancy, it was total, total hell. Torment through the whole pregnancy of my second daughter. And my second daughter was, I was pregnant with her maybe about eight months. And once again, we get into an argument. He comes home from work. We get into an argument about something. And we, I'm in the bedroom in the back. By this time, I was so beat down. So I'm sitting on the bed. And he's yelling and screaming and I'm crying. And the next thing I know, I had a piggyback. Anybody that remember back in the 80s, those plastic piggybacks that we used to get for our children? I had a piggyback probably about this big, a, a, a plastic one, mm -hmm. a pink one, that I was saving money in for my daughter. And that piggyback was sitting on the dresser in the bedroom. He picked that piggyback up as we were arguing right in my face, right here. Blood started everywhere. And I'm sitting on the bed 
like just crying. Literally could not move for about 15 minutes. And finally, he leaves the house. I don't know who he left with. I had my mother's brown and yellow station wagon. And I got my oldest and got this station wagon and drove around the corner to my auntie's house. And I just and I sat there until she came out with one of the customers and she, she saw my mom's car. And she got in the car and drove me around the corner to my mom's floor shop. And that was the day my mother and my aunt became my advocates hmm. wow. against him. And after that, there were a couple more incidents of the physical. But uh, uh, the final straw for me was my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter were in the bed sleeping. He had a friend over and they were drinking beer, smoking marijuana in the house and they were in the room sleep. My kids were in the room sleep. And my young, my oldest daughter woke up. And she had to be about maybe two. She was walking at the time. And she got herself out of the bed while we were in the front of the house in the living room. And she came out of the bedroom, of course, crying because she had just woke up. And he got angry that she had woke up and he walked to my baby. Y'all remember those sofas back in the day? in the 70s and the 80s, the arms, rest arms of mo of those sofas mm -hmm. were wooden. Mm -hmm. They were stuff like they are now. They were actually wooden, mm -hmm. the majority of them. And I had one of those sets in my house. This man picked my child up and cursed her out and slammed her on the sofa and the back of her head hit that wooden armrest and like this. And she let out a scream that pierced my soul. And that was the day I started plotting his death. Literally. I'm sitting here plotting it too, but go I ahead. Up my I made up my mind that I was going to kill him one way or the other. I mean, I had it mapped out. I had it mapped out. I was going I was going to do what I had to do because see, you can do what you want, say what you want to say to me. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to. So I literally had a, that thing mapped out in my in my mind. How I was going to take him out. And I'm going to go ahead, my mom and my dad and get my girls. I'm going to go ahead and do my 10 years, my 15 years. I'll be out. They'll still be young, and I can explain to them what happened. Literally, in my mind, it was mapped out. And, and, and it was a little before that, with everything that was going on, I didn't, I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't fight back. I, I, it was like I was so weak. I couldn't fight back. I didn't have the strength to defend myself and anybody that know me from school knew that yeah Rebecca can handle her I can't not it was like I had no strength or nothing to fight back until one day my mother called me his mother used to cook for us all the time she would cook food even if I cook at home and she would send plates of food to the house and she would send a specific plate for me and when my mother found out what was going on at home, she called me one day out of the blue and she said, stop eating anything she sends you. Don't mm. eat another piece of food she sends your house. And I was like, mommy, why? She said, just do what I said. Don't eat 
anything else she sends you. Nothing. She says, I don't care if she sends you a bottle of water. Don't you drink it. That day, I stopped eating whatever his mother sent there. And his mother was furious because he told her, I won't eat her food. Hmm. So she came to my house. And she had a daughter bring her to my house one day. And she went to Raising Cain about why I won't eat her food and why you don't eat my house and blah, blah, blah. And I said, because I'm, I, I cook at home. And she went to Raising Cain and I told her to get out of my house. And so she got mad and she said she was trying to put, she got mad and said, um, spoke some things that she was putting root on me. And I said, the devil is a liar. Whatever you trying would not work on me. And I put her mm. out of my house. And I know this thing sounds so crazy right now, y'all. But it was years later, I said, I thought about that thing. And I was like, that was some crazy stuff. I stopped eating her food. I stopped drinking anything. And the woman could cook. The woman had the bomb sweet tea. I stopped cold turkey. Wouldn't eat nothing she sent me. I kid you not, within hmm. a couple of weeks, I felt like a new woman. And I felt I, I felt a strength that I haven't felt in, since I was in high school. Wow. And I started plotting his demise hmm. in my mind. And so one day, he came home from work, and he wanted to fight. And that was the day. I said, this is it. Hmm. And he went um, towards me, and I just walked to the kitchen and pulled the biggest knife that I could find. And I was walking straight to him. And he ran into the bedroom and shut the door and got the phone and called my mom and dad and told my mother that I was trying to kill him. And little did he know my mother and father saved his life. Mm. She came, they came, they immediately got in the car and came around the corner. And my dad said to me, get your things. It's time for you to go home. Mm. And he got, he, he jumped to fight my mother and my father. Because he told my mother and my father, y'all can't take her nowhere. Y'all gave her to me. Because, see, he didn't call them for them to come and take me home. He called them to let them see she's trying to kill me. That's what the call was about. Not for them to come and rescue me. So when they came, my dad said, pack your things. It's time to go home. He stepped to my dad and said, you can't take her nowhere. You gave her to me. And my mother was like, I did not give you my child for you to kill her. She's going home. Mm. To the point where he shoved my mother into the door. And that was the day I thought Robert Goodman was going to jail. Yeah, I was going to say, what daddy do? That was the day the I daddy, thought Robert Goodman was going to jail. Daddy didn't play about his, his boo at all. Yeah. But I, 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 I went home. I, um, I went home. Now, get this. After being gone for almost a year from him, I went back. Hmm. That was going to be my next question. After, after almost not even quite a year, probably about nine, 10 months, maybe about 10 months, I went back. And why, why my, did we go back? My second daughter was a daddy's girl. Hmm. She kept, you took my, you took my daddy from me. I want my daddy. And he and I would talk on the phone every once in a while. And he, uh, okay, things, he changed, things were different. It'll be like that. All of a sudden, out of the blue one day, I said, I'm going back. And I went to his mother's house. And we got in the car and we drove over by the old boys club. And we talked. I didn't move out of my parents' house. He stayed at his mother and father, stepfather's house. 
but we started back seeing each other and it wasn't two weeks mm. it wasn't two weeks when the real him showed up mm. Wow. He wanted to come back because he wanted to get me back over there because he and his mother had talked and his mother wanted custody of my two oldest girls so that she could get food stamps and a welfare check for them. He didn't want them. She wanted them. So mm. that was the purpose of him for the two weeks. And if God had not prevailed, the way that he did in that two weeks, I literally would have had to wait months and months and fight to get my girls back. But God mm. stepped in. Wow. You know, in a it was I knew it was God all by himself when he stepped in and I got my girls back. Cause he literally had taken the girls supposed to be for the night and he wouldn't bring them back. Mm -hmm. So they Mother had my girls for about a week. And I couldn't get them back. But oh God. Mm -hmm. Stepped in. And I got them. And I went. After I got my girls back that day. Mm -hmm. Two days later. I went to my attorney's office. I got the name from. I can't remember. Somebody re recommended this attorney to me. Um, I went to him, told him everything that had been going on in that three, four years. And he said, I'm taking your case. This man didn't charge me a dime. Mm, wow. The didn't charge me a dime. I didn't pay a dime for my, my divorce. Mm. Now, once he was served with the divorce papers, I knew the day that he was served. My daughters and I were in the laundromat on Manning Avenue, right there on the corner of Manning Avenue and Atlantic Avenue where that car wash is now. Mm -hmm. We were in that laundromat. I saw the car pulled up. And he walked into the laundromat and didn't say not one word. The girls was like, hey, daddy, hey, daddy. He didn't even, he just walked in the laundromat and went to the back of the laundromat and he sat there and he stared at me the whole time I was in the laundromat. And I said to myself, he gonna do something real crazy. He done got served with the divorce papers. I just knew it. I just knew it. He didn't know my brother Bobby was in town. My brother was living out West and he had come home to visit and nobody knew he was in town. And later on that evening, when we got home, my sister called. My sister Rabbit called me to the door. She said, Becca, um, that fool out like here, she called him that fool. That fool out like here to see you. And um, I'm laying in the bed with my pajamas on and bathrobe on. And I'm, you know, the girls in the room in the bed watching TV. I go to the door and I'm like, what do you want? And he's sitting in his car now, right? He says, I just need to talk to you about my daughters. And my sister is saying to me, Becca, don't go outside. And my brother is standing at behind the door, so he don't know my brother, you know, my brother said. I said, no, I'm gonna see what he want. My brother said, I'm gonna stand right here in case he tries anything. Now I'll go outside, I'm standing at the car, and I'm like, what do you want? He opens the door on the passenger side and he said, just, just sit here for a minute. I just want to talk to you about the girls. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, okay, Rebecca, don't sit in this car. But old crazy me, I sat down in the passenger seat, turned this way with half of my body hanging out of the car, thinking if I do it this way, he won't try anything. Um, half of my body is hanging out of the car and he went to say something and he said like two words and then all of a sudden 
he grabs me around my neck like this and pull my upper body towards him and one hand on the steering wheel and he speeds off with half of my body hanging out of the car and i start screaming help and my brother dashes out of the house he skipped i think it was at the time six steps and he ran the car down half of my body is hanging out of the car the door is wide open and my brother caught him halfway down the street wow and my brother grabbed the car door and and he stopped abruptly and my brother said get out get out of the house and as i'm running to the house i hear my brother tell him if you ever touch my sister again i'll kill you mm. you should have seen his face that he was so he was so shocked that my brother was in town mm. Cause nobody knew he was there. And that was the last of the physical abuse, but the, the, the verbal and the chaos continued until I relocated. Mm. Wow. And after the divorce, it continued until I relocated and left the area. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> we can't. I, we ain't got all night, so I had. I, I couldn't tell you all the little bits and bits and pieces all in between. But it wasn't until <clears throat> everybody, my allergies are that I'm crazy. It wasn't until probably about. Maybe 15 years ago, mm. that I realized what I had been through had a name mm. called the. <clears throat> I was talking with a young lady here at work, and she had been going through domestic violence. She started telling me some things that was happening with her, and I'm sitting there looking at her like, oh my God. I've been through that last years ago, my ex-husband. And then she said she was joining a domestic violence group, um, support group. And I said, the, a what? And she said, domestic violence. And, and I'm like, what is that for? And that's when I realized what I had been through had a name. Wow. And the name was called domestic violence. So yep. I knew some, I knew some of this. I did not know all of this. And, and just to go um, back a little bit you said something about when his mom had your girls and you couldn't get them back for for y'all us women we need to understand that just because we have the child we birth the child doesn't mean that we have legal custody of the of of our babies the dad can take the baby and walk off and and i went through something similar not the physical abuse but but the whole you know, child thing. My lawyer at the time told me that I needed to go to, I, I needed to have legal custody because he could take my kids and never bring them back. So we need that, that part needs to be discussed on another day, but. That's so very true though. That's very true because yeah. I didn't, I really didn't realize, I didn't think anything of it. Um, when he took the girls, mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, he didn't, them, I let him take them because they, they were going over there to spend the night. And it wasn't until I was supposed to pick them up the next day that his mother was like, they're not going mm -hmm. nowhere with you. They are home. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? 
So it was almost a week. My girls don't even know this. This is going to be the mm. first time they hear It was almost a week before I saw my girls again. And let me wow. tell you how good I had. We had a trailer, a mobile home that we were renting all out off of um, Broad Street Extension. He had stayed there. I had at, I was still back with my mom. I was back with mom and daddy. He had moved his girlfriend at the time in the house. And I had called him. I think this was on a Saturday. Might have been a Sunday. And I called him on the phone and said, I, I, I do need to bring my girls home. And he was on the phone. He was like, I can hardly breathe. He had gotten sick with a very, I don't know if it was the flu or pneumonia. Mm. He was in the house by himself. And all I said to him was, I'm on my way. Because at this point, I don't know if the girls are out there. Mm -hmm. I drove. He was in the bed wrapped up body racking with pain couldn't move <clears throat> i said where are my babies <clears throat> mom got it i called his mother i said you need to come he's sick you might have to take him to the emergency room and when she came her and his stepfather they brought my girls mm. and she came in the house and she went to him and the girls came running to me hugging mommy mommy and when they got ready to leave out of the house she was taking him with her she said y'all girls come on and i said they're not going nowhere hmm. and she started raising him they're going home and i said they're going home with their mommy and i promise you you won't see him again and that's how I got my girls back. Wow. If mm. God had not, I would have had to wait probably to that whole process of going to court and everything to get mm -hmm. my girls back. Wow. That's so let me ask you this question. How has your view mindset shifted since then? I, I didn't know who you were then, but I definitely know who you are now. So how, 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 it was how did process. you overcome? Yeah. It was a process. It was a long, for me, it was a long process because I didn't realize probably until about 12 years ago that I had to forgive. I don't even think it's been that long. I had remarried. Was I in that wedding? Yeah. Was I in that Okay. Wedding. Probably about 14 years after, after my first marriage, I remarried. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't realize then that I was holding on to a lot of anger. I was holding on to a lot of anger. I was holding on to a lot of hurt. I was holding on to a lot of frustration. I didn't trust my second husband. I didn't trust many people actually. And it was a long process. And, and the reason being it was so long for me was because I didn't realize. I was saying that I was over it. Mm -hmm. I saying that I was past it, but in actuality, I had not really forgiven him. And it wasn't until my second marriage had dissolved, probably some years after my second marriage, that I realized somebody said to me one day, in order to live hmm. and move on, Come on. You got it. 
and the forgiveness is not for him mm -hmm. it's so that you can live and i started crying and it was at that moment that i was like i realized that i hated him i hated the sound of his voice i hated to hear his name I hated his mama oh. because she, the day before I had my second daughter, this man fought me in his mother's house because the doctor told me I had to be at the hospital seven o'clock to have my, um, to go in, to be induced labor. And he said he wasn't going at seven o'clock. Yeah, he was tired. So he fought me in his mother's house with his mother standing in the kitchen. And she stood there with a smirk on her face when I came out of the bedroom, when I finally fought my way past him. Now I'm nine months pregnant. Hmm. And she stood there and she watched it. And I didn't realize that I hated that woman. I hated her. I hated his sister. I hated his. I hated all of them because they all knew and they all were a part of it. And it wasn't until I forgave. Literally, I had to forgive so that I can live. Hmm. Say and that again. That's when I that's, I had to forgive so that I could live. And hmm. that's when I became free. Hmm. When I tell you when I forgave that man and I forgave his mama, and yeah, I said mama, because I'm from the country. <laughs> when I, folks, a burden just, I was, it was like a freeing. Now, if I see him, I can talk about him and I can talk about my journey. I can talk about his mama and I don't cry. I don't get mad. I don't get angry. I don't get hurt. I don't get any of that. Because I'm free. See, the, the, that domestic violence can, 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 can hinder and can last years after you out of the journey. If you yeah. don't get free. Hmm. And the only way to get free is to forgive the abuser. That doesn't mean go back to him. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Forgiving is means simply, I forgive you for all the hurt and the pain that you put me through because I'm no longer bound. Hmm. That's the only way you're going to be free of it. And it had to be about eight, nine years. What about, yeah, about eight years when I started telling bits and pieces of my journey on Facebook. The Holy Spirit, I was laying in the bed one night and the Holy Spirit told me, go on facebook and tell this and i'm like what mm -hmm. you know because not 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 even many people in my family knew mm. and and the, those that did know didn't know the extent the extent of it you know what i mean so it's like and now god you want me to tell you want me to write this on facebook so now not only is my family members going to find out Everybody on Facebook who reads is going to find out. And that's the night. That's, that's literally the night when I started telling my journey. And that's the night that I found out that so many of my friends hmm. and family had experienced domestic violence. It's, it's a quiet, dare I call it, disease that's killing us but we don't want to talk about it. 
we don't want to talk about it. Wow. We have to. We, we, you know, even when I am bringing my guests on this show, um, and I, I, a lot of my guests, they inbox me that they, you know, want to come on my show and tell their story. And there are some of my guests that I personally invite. Mm-hmm. And so people, other people have said, I need you to meet certain, so, so-and-so, they got a powerful journey. Whatever way God allow us to link up, one of the first things say, I say to them, I want you to come only if you're comfortable with doing it. And mm-hmm. only if you're ready to do it. Because when you start talking about this thing, whatever your journey is, your healing process starts. Mm-hmm. In the midst of that healing process, you're going to bring up all of what you've been burying, what you've been holding down. So when you start, when you start talking and you start bringing it up, the tears might come, you might cry, all of that. But it starts the healing. It starts the healing journey. My healing journey started long before this platform, this show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, I, and I, I guess that's why now it's so easy for me to talk about it and I not cry and I not get angry mm-hmm. along with being from the bondage. I can talk about it now. And I can honestly, truly say, I don't hate this man anymore. If mm-hmm. anything else, I feel pity for him. Mm. That's about the extent of what I feel. I feel I feel pity for his mom. This woman mm. is probably her nine. She still have the same mindset. <sighs> but Rebecca is free. <laughs> Rebecca has forgiven. Rebecca done got all that mess up off of her. And I, 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 you know, I think about things now and I'm like, God, if it had not been for that journey, warrior she would not have been birthed. Mm. It wow. is because of that journey and what I went through that God gave me this. So that's my that's my next question. Uh huh. Where does the name Warrior She come from? I know what it means to you. I know what it means to you, but I need you to tell us your words, where it comes from, and how deep it runs for you. Well, I'm just be honest. This thing came from God all by Himself. I was getting ready to have some t-shirts, right? Probably about four years ago, maybe five years ago. I was getting ready to have some domestic violence t-shirts done. And I didn't know what to put on the t-shirts. So I was like, okay, God, I need like a slogan. Something that speaks strength. Something that that speaks warrior, something that 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 speaks survivor. And I literally did not know what to put on the t-shirts. And I'm sitting in my house and I started playing with these little slogans in my mind. Warrior immediately came to me. We all know what warrior means. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, God. Mm, warrior, yeah, but I, I need something that speaks of. She's, 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 she's a fighter. She's had strength. She's a body. She's an overcomer. And I, I kid you not. 
after it was so many things in my head, all of a sudden it was it was like ugh, warrior C. And I'm like, what? I'm like, ain't nobody gonna know what warrior C means. When I tell you that thing nagged at me for about two years before I put it on a t-shirt. And the first person I had to put it on a t-shirt was like, wow, that's, that's good. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. So I sent it, I text my niece, Sabretta. And I said, if I say warrior she to me, what does it mean to you? And she said, you're a warrior. You're, you're a fighter. You got strength. You're a survivor. And she said, she is you. Mm. And I said, she got it. <laughs> she understand. Because I was like, ain't nobody gonna get that. Warrior she who mm -hmm. understand what she immediately knew it. And it just took on a life of its own. And the more if, if you notice, if you go back to about two years ago. If you see me when I post stuff, I will put hashtag warrior she. Mm -hmm. And it just took a it just took a life of its own. And I was like, I need a brand. I, I I need I need a logo. Well, Pastor Kim Green was like, you need a logo. You need a website. You need to do this, you need to do that. And Warrior C just took life. My logo of Warrior She, I kept seeing it. And I told my PR guy, I said, I can't explain it. I said, but I'm seeing this woman with an afro. I'm seeing this woman. And um, I see Warrior. I see Survivor. I see Strength all in here. Mm -hmm. And he started playing with it. And he said, do you want me to use your face or your daughter? I said, absolutely, my daughters. And that's all I said. And within an hour, he sent me a, a, a sample for my approval. And all I say with him was to, to him was, this is what I saw in the vision. That's warrior she. She means strength. She means mm -hmm. survivor. She means uh, she's a warrior. She's a fighter. And that's why this platform, I not only allow domestic violence survivors, to come on into the journey. I let people of all, listen, cancer, depression, suicide. When you've um, overcome all of that, you're a warrior. You are warrior she. You fought, you fought through all of it and you won. So what's next for Warrior She? I know what's next. Oh. Huh? So your words. What's I don't know what God is doing. Next for Warrior She. <laughs> on a journey, for real, for real. Um, I don't know what God is doing. I'm just following. Uh, Warrior She also promote gospel services. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know how long God is going to have me doing that. But I'm doing a service uh, June to where we... You know, we, I, I do gospel services where we bring awareness to the mental violence. Mm -hmm. um, um, we have, 
this is not, I, I'm excited about both of these things, June service, because I got some powerhouse anointed singers coming um, in June to, to minister worship. The, the powerful anointed brown sisters out of, out of uh, Tuscaloosa, mm -hmm. Alabama, are going to be in the South Carolina. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. Okay. October the 2nd. And that's because June that's what? what? Give, give us a specific Our very date. first purple and pink masquerade ball. Mm -hmm. This will be a tie event. And I'm excited about that because we're going to be together and we're going to we're going to honor um, the mess of Bible. And we're just going to have some, mm -hmm. not come on us, but we're going to come and just honor and have some fun, good food, good entertainment, female comedian. And we mm -hmm. just going to come together and love up on each other. Um, so God is doing some wonderful things. Um, she, um, we just launched our commercial for Warrior She on the Preach the Word Network, mm -hmm. a show called The Pastor Kimberly Green. We launched, mm -hmm. um, aired on this past Sunday, and it's going to air again this Sunday coming. Mm -hmm. So that was a blessing. That was an honor. So we, we got some good things happening for Warrior She. So how can we keep in contact with you? Um, I do not want you to give your personal cell. That's not what I'm asking you to do. But, you know, I am my sister's keeper. And it's something that, that you, you speak on a whole lot. It's something that, you know, I, I, I love to live. I have to live by that. So, you know, with your experience, maybe someone hearing this may just want to have a conversation with you to see how you got through and some someone's healing may come through you. So how can they reach out to you? You can always, always get me on Facebook. You can always inbox me. Uh, we have a Warrior She Room page as well on Facebook that you can you can reach out to me there, or you can inbox me on my personal page right here. I always respond to my inbox messages. Mm -hmm. um, we have a website. It's called warriorshe.org um, that you can, can reach us there. Uh, we are uh, working on getting another member for Warrior She. Mm -hmm. um, but if you box me, um, I'll definitely get in contact with you. Um, but I'm always reachable right here on Facebook. I, I actually check Facebook all day. I mean, mm -hmm. literally all day. Because I get a lot of inboxes mm -hmm. from um domestic violence survivors and a lot of my guests we actually have communicated through um messenger right here on facebook so and those of you who already have my personal cell phone number can always call me text me call me whatever i try to make myself available um i've had some people call me and text me in the middle of the night hmm. Um, some I miss because I was asleep, but I try my best to, when I wake up the next morning, to reach out and call. Um, so we're working on getting another telephone number for mm -hmm. Warrior She. Um, but like you said, I don't know if it's a good idea for me to put out my personal cell phone number, but if you need to reach me, by all means, inbox me in Messenger. And I promise you, I'll get to, I'll, I will answer. So before we go, final words, give us some words of encouragement, some words of healing, because whether you believe it or not, this, this is all a part of your ministry. You know, I've told you about your heart. I love your heart. I always loved your heart. 
but your voice now has that soothing ability to just calm the roughest storm. So give us something that you live by that incur like that whole forgive so I can live thing. Somebody put it in the comments, but I'm gonna write that down as soon as I get off the phone. Give us some parting words of encouragement. Oh wow. Um you're not alone. Hmm. Um I started doing this thing a few weeks back, probably a couple of months ago. I am my sister's keeper. Mm -hmm is what I go on Facebook and I will post and I will tag as many women as I can remember at that moment to tag in that post but I'm putting it out there for all of my sister girls on my page to just reach out let me know in a, in a comment that you're okay and if you're not I've had I've literally had some people to say I'm not okay and I, I mean it, listen, I'm, I'm texting you now or I'm calling you now. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed about. Mm. That domestic violence journey is not your journey, it's not your fault. There's nothing that you said or did that caused him to be who he is. Mm -hmm. Who he is has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with him all of it you're not who he said you are you're not that b you're not that i'm gonna say it whore you are somebody you matter there's nothing you can do that's gonna make him be anything other than what he is that's his battle not yours your battle is to get out alive your battle is to forgive so that you can live hmm. if you don't believe listen if you in this thing right now or even if you've already come out of it and you're like me and you are still holding on to the hurt and the pain because it's going to cause you all of that. Baby, just take a look at me and understand that you can make it. Mm. Because I found out I ain't who he said I was. I'm not who he said I was. I'm not who his mother said I was. That was his battle. That was his journey that he's still in. Mm. I forgave him so that Rebecca could live. You too mm. can make it. No, 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 no. You too will make it. Mm. You're going to be okay, telling will your journey encouraging them to get out all i can say if you're in it and i know people always say well why didn't she just leave why don't she just get out she's staying there she must like it if you ain't never mm, been in the journey then you don't easy. understand why you're still there if you ain't never been in the journey then you don't understand why she can't just get out because even sometimes if they get out, he tracks them down and he murders them. Mm -hmm. So it takes planning. It takes, it takes advocates. It takes my sister being my keeper to help me get out. Everybody ain't as lucky as I was. I had a hmm. praying mama. I had somewhere to go. When I, when, when I decided that I needed to, to I was done, I could go back home to Helen and Robert Goodman with no questions asked. Some women don't have that luxury. 
Mm-hmm. They don't have any place to go. That's why we got to be our sister's keepers. Not just say I'm my sister's keeper, but we got to show up and be our sister's keeper. Baby, you can make it. Mm -hmm. Just look at me. (sighs) Well, this has been an absolute joy for me to sit and talk with you. I'm honored that you asked me to do this for you and i was gonna do it and i when you asked me about it what i tell you i'm gonna be gonna work it out so i love you i love you so much your your strength your energy your humbleness your drive your ambition i love you Keep talking. I know y'all can hear my, my somebody knocking. Keep talking, Janine. I appreciate you. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to open up this type of line, this line of communication so we can start to heal our hurts. And that's what it's all about. So that's right. I appreciate you. And I'm going to turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your vacation with your husband to come interview me. Um, I truly appreciate it. Um, I'm humbled. And you enjoy yourself. (laughs) Have some fun. I'm a, a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll talk. All right. I love you. Love you too, baby. All right. All right. Bye. Okay, guys. That's my story. I couldn't tell all little bits and little pieces all in the between that I told what was important um, so that my sister girls can know we can make it. You can make it. You, you listen. Um, look at me. I kept me. Um, like I said earlier, if you need help, if you just need somebody to talk to, love up on you, you have so many of us that's here for you. I saw my cousin, my sister friend Dolores Singleton on here a few minutes ago. I don't know if she's still on here. She might have gone back to work. She is an awesome advocate for domestic violence. I see my sister girl, Denise Simmons, um, on here right now. She's going to be coming back on here. She's a domestic violence survivor. Listen, you guys got so many sisters who out here willing to be my sister's keeper. Not just say I am my sister's keeper, but work, be it. I mean, be our sister's keep. We're here. If you can't call, if you can get to Facebook and inbox me, message me. We're here. We'll get you some help. We'll get you some help. Our website is warriorsheet.org. You can message us there. We'll get you some help. If you just want to talk, if you've gotten out of the situation and you're still going through like I did with the anger and the hurt and the brokenness and the pain because you haven't forgiven him yet, I'm here. We are our sister's keeper. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for hanging on with us tonight. Um, while I tell my testimony. Um, So I thank you all. I thank you all for hanging with me. Um, Share the video if you don't mind. Um, Check us out on our YouTube channel, Warrior She, uh, the Warrior She Room on YouTube. Um, We have Warrior She Room Let's Talk on Facebook. 
um so we're here guys and next Tuesday we'll be coming back with another awesome guest a powerful testimony so meet us back here and i say thank you all i appreciate y'all for always hanging with me you all have a good night